Continuing on with classes and objects, um, with regards to member variables, so obviously when you declare an object, um, the variables inside of that object, um, i.e. member variables, they're just like any other variables, obviously. Um, it's uh, They have a type, they can be set, or they can, you, can, you can output their value, you can set their value, um, you can use them in mathematical expressions, and, um, and, and what have you. And I've already talked about the public interface, so basically you can access any of these variables uh, from um, your your program using the using the dot operator, and it is public here, which is not the case in object oriented programming. So that's a very important thing to remember as you um, continue learning uh, programming. Another quick example: so we have a, a class date type, and this class um, you have the definition up here. At, uh, on top of uh, setup and of course we declare uh, the new object of type date date type so this is um, the default constructor default constructor um, and of course here we're declaring the object notice that the object the class name is the type here and of course, that's the object itself. So we're declaring the object and constructing it. And then we're populating the value. So we, so we can set, uh, these individual, um, data members. So we'll have today's, uh, date dot day is one. Um, today's date dot month, we set it to October. Today's date dot year, I set to 2015. And of course, if we say print today's date dot month, that would refer to the um, that would refer to uh, the month that we just populated for this particular object, and it prints out um, October. So basically, October would be printed out, right? Not not prints, but you know, you know that. Um, so accessing the member variables is done simply using the dot operator, which is resembled here. So today's date is the name of the object, again, not the name of the class. So you will have the name of the object dot uh, member variables. So, for example, dot year, and that's how that's how it works using the using the dot operator. Um, so, I have a couple of examples here in my slides. I'm going to do similar examples in my in, in you know with you using uh, using processing, and then um, also go through go through the examples that I have um, I have posted here. But let's actually just do um, a very similar example, but uh, let's do it interactively so we can. Solve it together. So let's say let's say we have a couple of classes. So I have class ball. So the syntax is whatever it's inside of my braces is going to be a definition. And I'm going to have int x and y, and I'm going to have int um, dim as in dimension. And then I'm going to have another class called class square. And in there, I'm also going to have int x, int y, um, and let's say int dim. Had this from before so there's nothing else all right all right okay that's what I had I had, that's that's what I have in terms of in terms of my two classes so let's have a void setup and in void setup so basically in memory 
I don't have anything right now, right? Void setup loads, there's nothing in it. Uh, because I have the classes, nothing loads in memory. Now, I'm going to make an object. So I'm going to say ball b1. So I'm declaring an object. Say new ball. And then I'm also going to say ball b2 new ball. And let's let's make an object of type square. So I'll say square, and um, we'll call it box equal new square. All right. Well. Um, this compiles so what we have in memory now is is this precisely so this is all in setup nothing is in global everything has been declared so if i declared any of these objects outside of setup they would be in the global space on top here um, but since they're all inside of setup then i'm just gonna declare them all in setup so i'll have b1 which is going to be a box of its own. That's B1. When I, when I make B1, it's going to be constructed so that I'll have an X inside, a Y inside, and a dim inside. So that's how a B1 is an object. That's how it's, a, that's, you know, the, the, the word I, used to refer to an object was a super variable uh, simply because it, it's a composite variable it has other variables um, inside so then we'll go to the second line we have another ball object which is called b2 again x y and dim don't forget, so these are all initialized. When, when you construct an object, it's going to initialize everything to zero. So everything is set to zero. They do not contain garbage to begin with. And of course, you could um, you could test this, right? Let me let me just uh, well, actually, yeah, let's let's do it. So if I said print b1 dot x and then this is what i would be referring to if i run this zero gets printed out so it doesn't contain garbage it's actually initialized to zero what happens if i said because remember how you used to just say the name of a, a one-dimensional array and it would print what happens if i said b1 what happens if i said print b1 print the whole object what do you think processing will do so a really weird thing appears that's because it just sort of you can kind of you can kind of think of it as as if it's it's printing the address where b1 is so in memory addresses in memory are are uh, in 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 hexadecimal which is a, a base 16 um uh, number representation so you get a weird number you don't actually get the content because you don't actually get the content of b1 in order to get the content of b1 you need to individually call them you can't do it using a loop because um it's it's just it's just single data members in there so you have to do b1.x b1.y b1.dim there's no there's no dot length none of that stuff right so you actually have to individually print them out that's the that's the really key thing so let's continue with our memory diagram and uh, we'll get so we have box now so i'm going to draw object box using um, a different color to show that it's uh, it's different from the two other objects so in box it so happens that we also have an x y and dim and they're all initialized to zero as well but one thing you have to realize is that even though object box um, has the same number and type of variables it's still a whole different object a whole different entity a, a whole different 
object type than B1 and B2. So let's say I want to put, uh, I want to, so B1 and B2 are obviously two different variables. So if I want to store 11 in X in B2, so if I want here to have 11 instead, what I would do is I would simply say B1, sorry, B2 dot X equal 11. And of course, this is not this is not going to change B1 at all because B1 is its own guy, B2 is its own um, entity. So they're they're completely different. And of course, here, if I want to put um, if I write something like this, box dot dim twenty, so. Uh, value 20 would go inside of dim, right? Uh, and that's, they, they work exactly like, um, like other variables. It's just that you need to access the internal variables, the member variables using the dot operator. So again, if I said b2.y, and I assign that to 16, you'll see that B2 uh, in Y, we're going to assign it to value 16. All right, let's talk about copying objects. That is, if you have an object, let's say B2, and you have another object, B1, how do you copy B2 into B1? Well, the approach that we're going to take in this course and the most straightforward approach is that we're going to copy each element, uh, each data member uh, individually. So we do data members, copy data members one by one. So for example, if you wanted to copy B2 into B1, we're going to say b1 dot x is going to be assigned to b2 dot x b1 dot y is going to be assigned to b2 dot y and b1 dot dim is going to be assigned to b2 dot dim this is the safest way um, to do it uh, so if you have b2 dot x it's 11 this is going to be in b1.x. Um, b1 b2.y is going to be assigned to b1.y. So this is going to be 16. And b2.dim is going to be copied into b1.dim. So 0 is just going to be copied over here. Now, these two objects, this B1 is now a copy of B2 given these three lines. And don't forget, you can't do this using a loop because you don't know how many, uh, there's no way to know how many individual um, data members are inside, a, uh, in, inside an object. So you have to do it individually. Now, even though B1 is a copy of B2, they're not linked together. So changing one will not affect the other. So right now, if you had println and I said B1.x and B2.x, and I misprinted print ln, and let's comment that one out. So if you print this now, what you're going to get is 11 and 11. Now, if I decided to change b1.x to 10, or let's say something more obvious, 100, if I printed them both again, you see that the values are different. So B1 and B2 are not um, linked by any means. So right now, B1 is going to be 100. 
we could copy them using the equal sign, uh, the assignment operator. We are not going to use the assignment operator in this course uh, for objects. We are also not going to be using them for the arrays. I introduced them for the arrays. I am going to put a note uh, on that lecture to not use the assignment operator to copy arrays into one another and also not use them, not use it for copying objects into one another. The reason is, um, if, let's go back to what we originally had. So that this is what we had before we started copying. If we do, if we say B1, one equal b2 if you if you if you do this instead you're saying copy b2 into b1 but basically what happens is these two will will become one and the same what happens in in in, in memory is that this thing gets destroyed so we actually end up with something like this we end up with uh, let's change the color too we end up with b2 actually being a link to uh, sorry b1 B1 is going to be linked to B2, so that's what you end up with, which is, in reality, that's, that's, that's what you end up with. So what happens is, right now, if you said print B1.x and B2.x, obviously it's going to be the same thing. But, What's surprising is if you said, okay, well, I'm going to change B1. I'm going to change B1 to 100. And you try to print them again. So now when you change B1 to 100, B1X to 100, so X is going to change to 100 here. So here, you see that both of them are going to become 100. So this is an extremely dangerous thing to do because now you don't have two separate individual objects. You have one object only. Um, and this is, um, it, it works exactly the same way with arrays. Um, I've put a, a note on, on, on that lecture. So basically, you will not use, the in, in this course, we will not use the assignment operator, which is the equal sign, we're not going to use this for, to uh, copy objects or arrays. We're just going to do it member by member. So if with, 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 in the case of arrays, you do it using a loop. Uh, in the case of, um, in the case of uh, objects, you just do it member by member. Um, I should also mention that if you did decide, so if you did decide to copy things this way, you should, you should also know so what the repercussions are. You should know that this is going to be copied into, um, this is going to be a reference and, and, and not going to be its own separate object. But it is legal in processing to copy an object into another object in, in this way. Uh, this is not really copying. It's basically, um, this is basically what happens is b1 is going to be a reference to b2 so we're basically not going to cover this in in this course uh, when when you copy objects when you copy objects it's going to be member by member so we're not going to be talking about this in this in this course um, at all all right let's do another example on copying data members so let's say we have a couple of classes that aren't particularly even related. Um, so we have a class person, and we'll say a person will have um, 
string name uh, int age and double salary and now let's say we have another class we'll say um, class ball and we'll have int x and int y now in our void setup we'll quickly construct these two so we can have person p1 equal new person and we can have ball b1 new ball and let's have b2 as another object so let's see what we have in memory now we're going first of all we're going to have p1 which has name but name is null there's nothing there we have age which is an integer uh, there's zero and we have salary which is a double and we have zero and then we have two of the ball objects so b1 there is an x and there is a y then we have b2 and there is an x and there's y so if I wanted to copy data members, you have to understand that when we talk about data members, you're talking about integers or doubles or whatnot, right? So if I have b1 dot x and I set it to seven, well, then b1 is going to be set to seven. Now, could I do something like this? Could I say, b2 dot y is equal to b1 dot x is that possible that is i'm saying can i put the content of this x which is an integer into this y which is an integer so you have to realize that b2 dot y is not an object but it's an integer so b2 is an object b2 dot y is an integer so um, can I put an integer into another integer? Sure, I can. So this becomes 7. Um, could I go ahead and say B, can I say P1 dot age equal B1 dot X? Can I do that? Sure, because p1.h is an integer and b1.x is an integer. So I can put the value of um, x into here. So this becomes this becomes 7. And I'll run this so you can see that it's, it's running fine and it's all legal. Uh, what about, can I say p1.name and I assign um, b1 dot x so that means i'm trying to assign an integer into a double so p1 dot name is a string that's really important and it says it cannot convert int into a string um can i say p1 dot um salary so can I put an int inside a double? It's, it's, it actually processing allows me to do that. It wouldn't work the other way around though. So if I wanted to put the value of salary, which is zero right now, into b1.x. So if I wanted to do p1.salary, this wouldn't work 
because it says you cannot convert um, a double into an int unless I put the typecast here and then it works like a charm. So when you're copying, you have to understand that you have to copy the same types into the other types. Now, one thing I said that I'm not going to, so we are not going to cover. So let me just uh, take everything from here. One last thing I said that I'm not going to, we're not going to cover um, copying with the assignment operator. I just wanted to mention that if you, the assignment operator works only if the objects are of the same type. So B1 and B2 are of the same type and it works. But if I ever try to copy, for example, P1 into B1, so like objects of, of different types. So this is of type person, this is of type ball. Uh, this is This will not work. Again, the assign, assigning an object to another object, it's, it's one thing that uh, you guys will not be responsible knowing for the final exam. If I want you to copy an object into another one, it will be using individual um, data members. Thank you.